I think one of the most iconic companies of all time when it comes to game development is Konami. You guys know how much I dug the Konami NES games. Link to that will be up in the card up there. What's going on everyone? I am Jay, the channel is Square Pegs. Please be sure to like this video. Shares are appreciated and be sure to subscribe if you're new around here. Today at the request of viewer Brian Hatcher, we are looking at the 25 SNES games that Konami released. We are ranking these on a scale of S to F like we always do and now it is time to dive in with one of my favorite games, The Adventures of Batman and Robin. All right, starting first, we are beginning with one of my favorite games for the SNES, and that is The Adventures of Batman and Robin. Now, you might be asking yourself, Jay, why do you like The Adventures of Batman and Robin so much? And it is pretty simple. To me, this actually really captures the spirit of Batman the Animated Series, which is one of my favorite cartoons growing up, and I think this is just such a pure and wonderful beat-em-up game that you can't go wrong with it. It looks great, it sounds good, the animation is superb on this one. Not as good as the Sega Genesis version, I will admit, but I do feel that the gameplay is better in this one. And really, between the two games, it's kind of dependent upon your preference. Do you want a run and gun game, or do you want a beat em up? And for me, a beat em up is where I'm gonna gravitate. So Adventures of Batman and Robin, I like the look, I like the sound, I like the animation, I like the gameplay, it gets an A for me. Animaniacs, I'm kinda torn on. I love the cartoon of the Animaniacs, and I really expected this one to be something kinda special, but to me, it just, it just isn't. It's beautifully animated and the graphics are spectacular. The sprite work is huge and looks fantastic, but the gameplay, I just don't like it. I really can't see me playing this game ever again. I had never played it before. This is the first time I'd ever tried it out and I did not enjoy myself at all. Animaniacs gets a D. All right, next we have Axelay and Axelay is the type of game that you want to stick with because if I'm being honest, if I had ranked this based on my first impressions of the game, it probably would have been an F because I did not enjoy it. I thought the design was poor, I did not like the way it played, but the more I played it and the more I kind of realized how the game worked with everything being different shots and different abilities needed to defeat the enemies as opposed to it just being a straightforward shmup, I really kind of fell in love with it. I really enjoy this one. It's not perfect. There's a lot of flaws in this game. I don't think it explains things terribly well. Maybe this is something where just not having the instruction manual is kind of killing me on this one, but I do think that there's something to be said about the way this game plays. Not perfect, kind of middle of the road, maybe slightly above average, but I cannot in good conscience put it up to a B just because I think a lot of people wouldn't enjoy this one, so I am giving Axel a a C. For a glorious moment in time, Konami had both the Ninja Turtles and the Batman licenses, and they were determined to make just the best of the best beat-em-ups that they could, and Batman Returns is no different. Featuring amazing sprite work that looks just like it stepped out of the Tim Burton film, you have Batman in all his Michael keaton -y glory, looking just armored and ridiculous with a fantastic carapace on him, big clown enemies to fight with, with huge sprites and fantastic attack animations, and seriously, you can pick someone up by the face and just slam them into the ground. That's really cool. Batman Returns is really good. It's not a perfect beat-em-up. There's definitely some flaws here. It's a little slow, a little clunky, so I'm going to give it a B, but it is a very fun game, and I really enjoy it. Biker Mice from Mars is one of the most unique racing games featuring an unbelievably obscure IP that I just did not ever expect to see on the SNES. And I fell in love with it as a kid, and I love it today. Now, as an adult, I can tell you, it is not without its flaws. Uh, it, it is a very tough racing game. It's a very obtuse racing game, I think is probably the best way to put it. Like, there's definitely some things here that I'm just like, no, not quite, not quite, guys. You didn't quite stick the landing there, and that's unfortunate. But I think that there's something to be said about the beautiful sprite work, the fantastic sound, and the just over-the-top racing action in the game. If you've never played Biker Mice from Mars, I strongly urge you to do so. Above average game, Biker Mice from Mars gets a B. All right, this one might be our first kind of controversial ranking here. Uh, Castlevania Dracula X. Now... I look at this one and I see this as kind of a test bed for what was to come on the PlayStation. And I think that there's definitely solid bones here. And I think there's something to be said about the gorgeous animations, the fantastic sprite work, the great looking environments, everything like that. But to me, the game just isn't fun. It's really slow. It's kind of plotting. I don't really like the mechanics of how things are laid out. Like it tries to be it tries to be both classic Castlevania and new Castlevania, and it doesn't really stick either landing. It's a very middle-of-the-road game to me. I, I'm going to give Castlevania Dracula X a C. Now, Contra 3 The Alien Wars is superlative. This is one of the best games on the Super Nintendo. It is fast, it is over-the-top, it is loud, it is everything you want Contra to be. Now, if you've seen my previous videos, you know I am not a terribly huge Contra fan, because I suck at the games is really what it boils down to. 
and that doesn't change here. I'm terrible at this game. So while a lot of people are going to give this one an S, and I cannot begrudge you if you do, I cannot in good conscience give it an S just because I have such a difficult time playing it, but I can give it an A based on how great of a game it is. All right, next we have Cybernator, and Cybernator to me is a really, really solid idea that is just really, really poorly executed, but is corrected down the road. So well, let's start with the positives about Cybernator. The look of the game is gorgeous. It's a big mech game. It's fairly well animated. The sound is really good. Where the game falls to pieces, though, to me, is with the gameplay. It's just not really fun to play. It's pretty clunky. It doesn't move terribly quickly, and it doesn't move terribly efficiently, I guess is the best way to put it. There are certain animations and certain abilities that trigger when you do things that just don't feel like they're in place. So I can't really suggest this one to people. For me, Metal Warriors kind of takes this formula and perfects it, and we'll get to that later on in the video. So Cybernator to me, uh, it's gotta be a C. It's not... It's not a D, it's not a bad game, it just doesn't really do anything terribly, terribly well. So it's very middle of the road. Cybernator is a C. Uh, Gradius 3 is one of the best shmups on the console. It looks good, it sounds good, it is a classic formula that is not broken, so you do not need to fix it. It's, I think it's a lot more forgiving than older Gradius games, and that's not a bad thing because they were unbelievably difficult on the NES. And I think what it does here is it takes that formula and makes it a little bit more forgiving while still having a solid challenge in place. Gradius 3, nearly perfect, gets an A. Alright, these next two might be controversial, but I don't know what the fandom is on these games. So, International Superstar Soccer, um, I'm not a huge soccer guy. I, I know soccer, I, I like soccer, but it isn't my favorite sport, so it's not a video game I typically play, and if I do, I'm probably going to pick up FIFA. So, International Superstar Soccer, not really something I would go out of my way to play again. Um, it animates really well, it looks good, it sounds really good. And I think there's some neat gameplay elements in play here. It does play like a fairly reliable arcade version of a soccer sim. Not something I necessarily need to play again, so I can't rank it terribly high, but as someone who isn't a huge soccer fan but appreciates the sport, I can give this one a C. International Superstar Soccer Deluxe, much like the last one, uh, there are moderate improvements, but not enough to bump it up. International Superstar Soccer Deluxe, just like its predecessor, also gets a C. All right, next we have Legend of the Mystical Ninja, and this is just such an unbelievably charming and wonderful game and really difficult and takes so many different elements and crans them into just a cohesive game that is a blast to play. Sprite work is great, animations look great, it's got its own distinct style, there's awesome upgrades you can purchase and go into shops like you can in River City Ransom. This just feels like a natural fit for the SNES, and it feels like a Konami game, like this feels like a pure Konami game. There are some obscurities with the gameplay, it doesn't age terribly well, so I can't give it an S, but to me, Legend of the Mystical Ninja is an absolute A. All right, Lethal Enforcers. This one is hard to rank because I don't own a CRT, so I don't have a light gun to play this with. Yeah, so for something that came packaged with a light gun, for it to operate as well as it does with a controller is ridiculous to me because it's still shockingly fun. Now, I played Lethal Enforcers in the arcade, so I understand that this is not an arcade perfect port, but it's still pretty fun. A little bit of falling down here because it is a Nintendo port, so there's no blood, it doesn't actually have any real violence, guys just kind of fall down as opposed to dying, but you know what, the game is pretty cool. I, I do want to give this one a bit of a higher ranking than I would, but if I'm being honest, it is an average shooting game, so it is going to get a C for me. Alright, now here we go. Metal Warriors. Metal Warriors takes everything that Cybernator did and perfects it and cranks it up to an 11. It is one of the best looking games I've played on the SNES. Something that I had never played before and never experienced before, so I am absolutely shocked at how much I enjoyed this game. This is a mech platforming shooter. It's wonderful. It looks good, it sounds good, the gameplay is unbelievably challenging and intense, like you are actually like in the moment and it is so much fun to play. The intro is spectacular. This game, 100% an S. All right, we're through 14, there are 11 more to go. Let's stop and take a look and see where we are right now in the rankings. All right, so there are, there are a couple of games made by Konami on the SNES that were not great, and they are kind of unsurprisingly sports games. All right, so let's start with NBA Give and Go. Now, what can we say that's really nice about it? Okay, so the digitized voice in the game is spectacular. It calls the action really well. It tells you what's going on in the game fairly frequently. 
and it doesn't really miss. It actually is fairly competent at telling you what's going on. The character models look really good. They're fairly representative of what players they are from the NBA. And you're able to use the playoff teams from the NBA that season. Now, where the game does not succeed is, um, well, unfortunately, in the gameplay, like, you know, when you have a sports game, you want it to actually kind of play like the sport, and NBA Give and Go doesn't even come close to it. This doesn't feel like basketball at all. It's not fun. It doesn't control well. It looks good, which is why it isn't a failing point, but NBA Give and Go is an absolute D. Now, where things fail is NFL football from Konami. Uh, this game doesn't look good. It doesn't play well. It doesn't sound great. It's just, it's an absolute bad football game. One of the worst I've ever played. Uh, NFL football gets an F. Oh boy, so I'm of two minds on Prince of Persia. I'm a big fan of the Prince of Persia series. I used to love this game when I was a kid, and apparently everything about this game has gone completely from my memory because I can't remember how to play it. I'm not good at it. I'm not doing well at playing it. Um, now let's 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 say r right quick. That's not a fault of the game. That's a fault of me. I'm not doing well at playing this game. But the things I do appreciate about the game, though, are how good it looks, how well it animates and how good it sounds. It does what it does very well. Now, this is a PC port, so it is gonna play a little bit different on a console than it would on the PC, and that is where I played it originally, so maybe that's where the disconnect is for me. I can't rank this high enough to say that, you know what, even with all its flaws, it's worth checking out. You should definitely look into it. it it's it's a hard game to play. It's, it's average. It, it comes in middle of the road for me, just because it does have such a lineage, and I do think it is worth people checking out. It's just, no going in that you're not probably going to have a great experience. Prince of Persia for me on the SNES is a C. Sparkster is a super clever mascot platformer that I had never played before. I remember seeing it at video stores when I would go rent games and thinking I might check it out sometime, but I never actually did. And I kind of regret that because I had a really fun time playing this one. It's got a really neat look to it. The animations are wonderful. The character of Sparkster is adorable and has a really unique kind of motif to him. I mean, he's a possum. He can hang from the ceilings. He can cling onto ropes and stuff like that. It's really cool. And there's some really neat powers at play here that I kind of figured out the further I went into the game without an instruction manual. Being able to launch myself up and be able to attack and get higher up in the level than I was before, it's really fun. It's a very satisfying game to play. Sparkster? That, to me, this one's pretty good. This one gets an A. Alright, straight up, Sunset Riders is one of my all-time favorite games on the SNES. It is something that I absolutely adore. I think it looks fantastic. I love westerns. Like, Lone Ranger is one of my favorite characters, and this felt like kind of the next level of a Lone Ranger movie. This is an awesome side-scrolling shoot-em-up, and I think it is perfect. The game looks, sounds, and plays wonderfully. Sunset Riders gets an S. And you follow up Sunset Riders with one of the top five games on the SNES, as far as I'm concerned, and that is Super Castlevania IV. Now, I know this is a ridiculously controversial opinion on this channel, because so many people think I'm crazy for loving this game, but guys, I put so many hours into this growing up, and I just, I absolutely adore it. I know a lot of folks love Bloodlines and the Genesis, and I can't fault you for that. Bloodlines is a brilliant game, but this one, this is my 16-bit Castlevania. Super Castlevania 4 is magnificent, and why do I love it so much? I mean, well, one of the reasons, the whip waggle thing. I think that's hilarious. I don't know why, it's just something that sticks in my head. This is one of the first things I think of when I think of Super Castlevania 4. But for me, the look, the sound, the animation, the gameplay, all of it works. It takes everything that worked in Castlevania and adds a 16-bit element to it without trying to reinvent the wheel. Perfect game, absolute S. All right, Tiny Toons Buster Busts Loose. Now, I liked the Tiny Toons games on the NES, including the animation studio. I thought it was clever. I thought it was a neat idea. I think that the animations in this game are some of the best on the SNES. This feels like an episode of Tiny Toons come to life. It looks fantastic and it sounds amazing, but the gameplay in the game is really weak. It's kind of floaty, it's kind of flighty. The obscurity of what you need to do with having to boost and running out of boost to be able to go up walls and stuff like that, it's not a natural gameplay experience. It just doesn't feel right. So for me, Buster Bust Loose, as good as it looks, it plays so poorly. Buster Bust Loose gets a D. Tiny Toons Wacky Sports is a collection of sports-themed minigames where you get to play as Buster, Babs, Plucky, or whatever the little Tasmanian Devil's name was. I can't remember it, I'm sorry. And I wish it was something that was going to be cool, like you were going to actually be able to play and like experience what the world of Tiny Toons was. 
but guys, this game is awful. Uh, the mini games are not fun. They don't control well. They are not well explained. They do not. It's just not fun. This game is bad. This one gets an F. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 4 Turtles in Time is nearly perfect. And don't think that means it's getting an A. This is absolutely getting an S. Spoilers. It's, it's, it's getting an S rank here. It's so close to being a perfect game that I can't think of a reason to really knock it. Like, I'm, I'm being nitpicky here as to the things I'm trying to find flaws with. The controls might be a little bit off. The difficulty might be a little bit low compared to other Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles games. And it might not be a perfect one-to-one -one for what you're looking for based on arcade experiences from previous games, but the look of the game is stunning. The animations are magnificent. The sound is nearly perfect. The enemy designs are fantastic, and it gives you everything you would want from the 1980s Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles animated series. It's perfect. Ninja Turtles 4, Turtles in Time, gets an S. All right, and I know a lot of folks love Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters, and I like this significantly more than I like the NES version of the game, but to me, it's just not a great fighting game. It's a little clunky. Uh, it animates really well, and I think there's some really neat characters brought in that you wouldn't typically see in a Ninja Turtles game. Like, I like that you can play as Wingnut. I like that there's Triceratons in here. I like even like some of the original designs for the characters in here. But to me, the game is just not great. It's not good. It's not bad. It's just really middle of the road with some really quality sprite work. Tournament Fighters gets gets a C, and I might be being generous on that one. If this was done another day, I might give it a D, but I'll, I'll give it a C today. All right, last one out the gate is Zombies Ate My Neighbors, and you guys know how much I love this. I talked about this on an eShop Excellence a few months ago. And yeah, it's one of the best experiences you can have on the SNES. With great animations, a unique IP, fantastic gameplay, a wonderful look, and great sound. Zombies Ate My Neighbors is one of the most signature games of the 16-bit era, and is an absolutely fantastic game to play. It's nearly perfect. Much like Turtles in Time, this one is hard to find flaws with. It can sometimes be too hard, it can sometimes be too easy depending on what level seed you get. So I am going to give this one an S. All right, and here we are with the final rankings. There you go, my friends. Every game that Konami released on the SNES ranked from S to F to let you know what I think of each one. Now we are bound to agree, we are bound to disagree, but what I want you to do is fill out your own version of the tier maker below. The link will be in the pinned comment. And hey, make sure you tag me on social media and let me know what your rankings are. Let me know what your favorite is and what your least favorite is. And let me know which one I am way off base on. Please hit like, please subscribe if you're new around here. And hey, if you really dig the work I do around here, please consider becoming a monthly Patreon sponsor like the fine folks you are seeing on screen right now. Or at the very least, check out our merchandise links to both will be in the pinned comment down below, as well as links to all of my pages on social media. Until next time, folks, I have been Jay. I appreciate you spending a little bit of time with me today as we look at every Konami SNES game. Until next time, remember to play more games, stay square, and take care. I'll talk to you soon.